I now give the floor to the representative of Ar Armenia. Madam President, we thank the Presidency of Japan for convening the open debate on the theme of promoting conflict prevention and empowering women and youth, and for providing a comprehensive concept note to guide today's discussions. Building inclusive, peaceful, and resilient societies is at the cornerstone of fostering development, upholding human rights, and preventing conflict, with women and youth playing a pivotal role in achieving those objectives. Armenia reaffirms its commitment to the implementation of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace, and Security, and Resolution 2250 on Youth, Peace, and Security, and we have been consistently working to integrate their principles into national policies, programs, and initiatives aimed at advancing gender equality and youth engagement. Armenia supports efforts of the UN Peacebuilding Commission in prioritizing the integration of gender equality strategies into its important work. Madam President, women and youth possess a distinct potential to contribute to peacebuilding and sustainable development. Yet in situations of armed conflict, they are also the ones who are affected most by, the, by its consequences. The blockade of the population of Nagorno-Karabakh, which started in December 2022 and culminated in September 2023 with the use of military force against the civilians, demonstrated a magnitude of disproportionate impact upon women and young people, especially in their role as caregivers. This implicit example of a premeditated ethnic cleansing masterminded and perpetrated under the watch of the international community has resulted in widespread forced displacement of the entire ethnic Armenian population, further exacerbating disparities and vulnerabilities for those who bear the brunt of violence and deprivation. According to the report published by the Amnesty International in 2023, the disruption of essential goods and services in Nagorno-Karabakh affected families with young children the most, whereby women and youth have come to be revealed as the main targets of the blockade. Azerbaijan's persistent violations, including the armed attacks and the incursions against Armenia's territorial integrity, promulgation of aggressive rhetoric, and the systematic destruction of millennia-old Armenian cultural heritage, demonstrate time and again utter disdain for the international law as exemplified also by failure to comply with the provisional measures issued by the International Court of Justice in the period of 2021-2023. The United Nations and this Security Council has yet to acknowledge the gravity of these violations and to reflect on the failure to prevent them. Madam President, women and youth bring unique perspectives in shaping responsive, responsive humanitarian action and sustainable development strategies that prioritize lasting improvements in the livelihood, resilience, and dignity of populations, in particular those that apply the human security approach. And I want to acknowledge Japan's important contribution in this regard. In their roles as community leaders and caregivers, women are indispensable to supporting human security by leveraging knowledge, networks, and expertise, especially at times of crisis and its immediate aftermath. Likewise, the engagement of youth as digital natives is crucial for driving progress and innovations, also by promoting responsible online behavior, countering hate speech and misinformation. Armenia recognizes the importance of collaborative efforts for promoting conflict prevention and its recurrence through building strong and resilient communities with the engagement of diverse stakeholders, including women and youth from the affected populations. Madam President, there is an urgent need to strengthen the capacities of the United Nations system for prevention to evaluate its current toolbox and to establish more responsive and effective mechanisms for addressing the root causes of conflict while ensuring accountability for atrocity crimes and for violations of international humanitarian law and human rights law. I thank you.